So I'm, I'm Jibo Liu from uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and I'm here today to uh, give a talk about our work titled the BTD Unleashing the Power of Decompilation for X86 Deep Neural Networks, uh, Deep Neural Network Executables. Uh, so this briefing is mainly about decompiling uh, DN executables and recover the original DN models. Okay, so uh, this presentation uh, is divided into five parts. I will first uh, briefly introduce uh, the background of deep neural network executables, then discuss our motivation of decompiling uh, the DN executable and uh, the corresponding start model used. In the rest, I will present the uh, design and evaluation uh, results of our decompiler. So first, let's start from the background. Uh, first of all, what is a DNA executable? So basically, DNA executable uh, is a standalone binary format of the DN model. So it's generated by deep learning compilers, and it, oh, sorry, and it has exactly the same functionality as the original DN model. For example, if we uh, compile a, a image classification model into the uh, DN executable, then feed the image to the executable, it will return the uh, same label. So inside the DN executable, the same model inference is processed during runtime. So why we wanted to compile DN model into uh, a DN executable when we already have mature deep learning model, uh, deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. So the main reason is that as DN models are getting more and more popular, sometimes we may want to uh, deploy DN models on uh, heterogeneous hardware devices, not only devices with powerful GPUs, but also low power devi uh, devices such as IoT devices, edge devices, uh, and smart wearable devices. So in, in that case, we want to leverage the performance potential of uh, hardware devices. To do so, the latest solution is to compile DN model into DN executable. And correspondingly, deep learning uh, compiler techniques are proposed to compile high-level models into uh, into the uh, executables. And in this process, deep learning compilers especially can uh, optimize the binary with hardware, uh, hardware features and abstractions to further squeeze the performance uh, potential of uh, hardware devices. For example, Intel SMD uh, extension provides instructions to process multiple data in parallel. So such kind of uh, hardware features are extensively used by deep learning compilers. And there are actually uh, would be multiple optimization cycles during compilation. So as shown in this figure, generally the DN uh, model will be converted into graph IR and uh, optimized according to its computational graph. Then it will be converted into low-level IR for some hardware-specific optimizations. And finally, the deep learning compiler will generate a low-level binary code according to the target backend. And until now, many resources from academia and the industry have been devoted uh, to the research of deep learning compilers. For example, TVM which is probably the most mature deep learning compiler. Uh, it's supported by uh, Apache Software Foundation and was originally published at OSDI 18. And the Glow is supported by Meta and Fusion, which was published at OSDI 20. It is supported by Microsoft. Okay, so although currently most DM models are still uh, deployed with PyTorch and TensorFlow. It's a growing trend to uh, deploy DN models on CPU and uh, low power processors with deep learning compiler techniques. For example, NXP and Qualcomm, uh, they are incorporating deep learning compilers into their applications, and Amazon and Google also 
explore including deep learning compilers into their deep learning uh, services for cost efficiency and uh, to boost performance. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the background of DNA Exitable. Then I will start to introdu introduce what do we want to do with uh, DNA Exitable and why we choose DNA Exitables as the target. So currently, the deep learning compiler community uh, still mainly focuses on the optimizations and uh, to improve the performance of DNA Exitable. However, as security researchers, we also wanted to study DNA executables to learn the possible weakness. In particular, we wanted to know uh, what is the difference between DNA executables and the traditional software, traditional x86 uh, binaries, for example. And how should we safely use deep learning compilers? And what are the potential security risks of using deep learning compilers? Specifically, we wanted to know if we should view a DNA executable as a black box or a white box. In other words, can we uh, easily reverse engineer a DNA executable to its original DNA model? So it's, it's a critical question. If the DNA model, uh, DNA, if the DNA executable is incomprehensible, and uh, uh, then we can safely deploy the d compiled DNA executable on the devices accessible to attackers. However, if it's vulnerable and can be easily reversed by attacker, then the attacker may be able to steal the model for profit. In that case, we should be very careful when deploying the DNA executable. Uh, actually, with more than 20 years of development, we already have mature reverse engineering techniques for traditional software. And we actually try to uh, decompile the DNA executable with state-of-the-art decompiler, Adapro. However, the CFG of generated uh, code can be quite hard to understand. So after all, there is no source code for DNA executable, and all control flow and data flow are generated by deep learning compilers uh, instead of written by human developers. So for human reverse engineers, it be, would be very difficult to understand such code. And also the data flow of a compiled uh, DNA executable can be very complex. Typically, the uh, DNA inference process can involve more than millions of floating point arithmetic operations. So with so many overwhelming uh, arithmetic operations, it's very challenging to figure out what uh, the meaning of the decompiled code. Besides, deep, comp uh, deep learning compilers will optimize the memory layout before uh, the computation of each DNA operators. So as shown in this figure, before optimization, the weights of a convolutional operator are sequentially stored in the memory, and thus they are not aligned. So deep learning compilers actually will rearrange the layout and convert the four-dimension metrics into a five-dimension metrics. And then the ICIMD instructions can be used to compute uh, multiple data in parallel and uh, achieve better memory locality. So the optimization strategies used by deep learning compilers are quite complex, so I won't discuss in detail because this work uh, mainly focus on uh, reverse and reversing the executables. So now we'll start to introduce the threat model of this work. Actually, attacking DN models is not a new idea. Although previous works uh, mainly focus on uh, attacking deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. So until now, many different attacks uh, have been explored, including uh, cache side channel attacks, power side channel attacks, electromagnetic emanation side channel, and even bus snooping. So most of these attacks aim to steal the DN model architectures. 
uh, including operator types and uh, the uh, topo topology between operators. So pre-trained parameters are really not the target. So even they can successfully steal the model architectures, they still need to retrain the model. Generally speaking, existing attacks can be divided into uh, two categories according to their threat model. So the first is physical access model. In this scenario, the DM model is deployed in a devices accessible to the attacker. So the attacker can use special equipment to measure side channel information, for example, power consumption, or even directly snoop the memory bus. And uh, therefore, the attacker have a quite a strong ability to, uh, to attack the uh, DM model deployed in the devices. And on the other hand, remote access model assumes a more practical scenario. So in this case, the DM model is deployed on resource sharing clouds, where the attacker and the user, they may share the same CPU core and the CPU cache. So in that case, the, the attacker can run an unprivileged process on the same hardware and observe the cache access patterns of the victim DM model. And in this work, we assume a different threat model. Specifically, if we already have physical access to the uh, target device, for example, if the DM model is deployed in uh, smart devices like smartwatch, speaker, cleaner, and other devices, we can actually be more aggressive. We can directly extract the DN executable from the de hardware devices. Such DN executables are standalone binaries, and they have pre trained parameters inside. Okay, so that's what we did in this work. So, given the extracted DN executable file, in this work, we propose BTD the first DN executable decompiler. So we aim to uh, analyze and uh, extract high-level DN model specifications, including DN architectures and also pre-trained parameters from the x86 DN executable. Okay, so now I will start to uh, introduce how we achieve this in, in, in the rest. So as I discussed above, DN executable theory have a very complex data flow with uh, more than millions of uh, floating point multiplications. So, uh, uh, so th this makes analyzing DN executable quite difficult. However, one of the major difference between DN executable and the traditional software is that DN executable act actually have only one valid execution path. So which means no matter what the input is, DM model actually will do the same computation. So this gives us an opportunity to summarize the semantics for, uh, from a low level binary code with symbolic execution. Because there's no pass explosion problem, so it's very suitable for symbolic execution. And moreover, the operators are generally defined in a clean and rigorous, rigorous manner. For example, no matter what the uh, deep learning compilers are used and what is the uh, model structure, the semantics of the convolution operator should be always the same. So that means uh, deep learning compilers may generate a distinct low-level code, but they always retain the same high-level operator semantics. Therefore, one of our basic ideas is to summarize the invariant operator semantics with a trace-based symbolic execution. So overall, BTD consists of three steps, including uh, operator recovery, topology recovery, dimensions, and uh, parameters recovery. So as shown in this workflow, we first disassemble the uh, targeted DN executable with Adapro. Then with the three steps, we recover the full model specification, including operators, topologies, dimensions, and uh, pre-trained parameters, like weights and biases. So some related works also call uh, the topologies of, operator, of, of operator, operators as computational graph and the 
dimensions of our operator operators also called the hyperparameters. So now we'll start to introduce the design of BTD. So in the first step, we try to map assembly functions to DNA operators. So basically, we view it as a typical multi-class classification task. So to do so, we train a LSTM model to treat x86 code as language tokens and use the bad pair encoding method, which is initially proposed in the NLP field, to segment x86 OP codes. So after this type, each operator will have a label indicating its operator types. For example, convolutional label, a ReLU label, and a fully collected label. And in the second step, we recover the topology of DNA operators. So in, in other words, we try to connect the DNA operators into a computational graph. And as we observe, the deep learning compilers uh, usually compile operators into assembly functions and pass inputs and outputs through function arguments as memory pointers. So in this step, we can simply hook every call side to record the memory addresses. And we connect the two operators only if one operator's input is another out operator's output. And in the third step, we implement a trace-based symbolic execution to get the human-readable symbolic constraints. So we first run the targeted DNA executable to uh, log a trace of, the, of a specific assembly function. And in this step, we, do, uh, we, we don't need to worry about the input because we don't care about the actual numerical values during DNA inference. And we only care about the exact instructions executed. So any valid input, even random noises, can be used as the input to run the uh, DNA executable. And the sensor trees can be very huge and slow to uh, analyze with the symbolic execution. We also use reverse taint analysis to remove unnecessary parts uh, in the trees and only keep instructions related to the output. So here uh, is an example. So given the convolutional operation in figure A, we can extract the symbolic formula shown in figure C. So we uh, record the memory addresses of inputs and weights. And the gap or offset between input addresses uh, that actually implies the dimension information. For example, the gap between two input values, uh, two input addresses is 12, and the size of one float value is four bytes. So we can infer that each row in the input matrix has three elements. And we uh, summarize a set of heuristics to uh, infer dimension from the symbolic formula. And here is another example. As we can see, symbolic constraints from different compilers and different optimization levels, they are mostly consistent. Therefore, our symbolic constraint-based heuristics are general and across compilers. And finally, according to uh, the dimensions we recovered, we instrument the DNA executable to dump all print-trained parameters during execution. Then with all extracted information, we can event eventually rebuild a new DNA model showing identical behavior with the original model. And we released the BTD at uh, GitHub with, uh, with a Docker image for demo purpose. So you can try with the and uh, run our, our experiments with only one command. And BTD also passed uh, the artifact evaluation process of using Nix security with available functional and reproduced badges. OK, so before the end, I also will briefly introduce how we evaluate the BTD. We choose eight versions of three state-of-the-art production-level deep learning compilers, uh, including three versions of TVM, three versions of Glow, and two versions of 
and fusion. We also choose seven models in which six are uh, image classification models and uh, they actually cover all operators used in the CV models from the Onyx Zoo. So these CV models are real world models with quite complex structures and plenty of operators. And they are all uh, trained on ImageNet. So in the first step, we can uh, achieve over 99% accuracy when recover operator types. Also errors in this step can be eliminated or fixed by post-checking corresponding symbolic constraints we uh, get from uh, symbolic execution precise. For example, if the predict type is convolutional and ReLU, but uh, we recheck the symbolic constraints and we found that there is no max operation in the constraint. It indicates that we may wrongly add the ReLU label and the correct label should be convolutional only. And in the third step, BTD achieves 100% accuracy in most cases. For only two cases, BTD fails to recover the dimensions because of uh, optimizations applied by deep learning compilers. So uh, for more details, you can refer to our archive paper because the optimizations of deep learning compilers are quite complex, so I uh, won't discuss too much in this presentation. And overall, BTD is able to extract functional uh, DN models in most cases, except the rest night model compiled with TVM. So given the decompilation ability of BTD, in most cases, we can actually enable white box attacks on a black box obscure uh, DN model, uh, DNX robots. So here is an uh, example. We use BTD to decompile a rest night executable and uh, then reuse the GP inversion, uh, which was published as, uh, at CVPR20 to attack the decompiled model. So this attack actually tried to recover the image of a label. So we indeed are able to extract meaningful images and the image quality is as good as attacking the white box model. And to conclude this presentation, here are three takeaways. First, reversing DNA exitables with existing techniques is hard due to complex control flow and data flow in a DNA executable. And the second, a DNA executable has only one valid execution path, so giving us an opportunity to summarize the semantics with symbolic execution. And with the summarized, uh, symbolic, uh, summarized semantics, we can try to infer the dimension information and even the memory layout. And uh, overall, we propose and release BTD, the first deactable decompiler. Uh, okay, so that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. And I'm glad to take some questions from the audience now. Thanks.